Bienvenidos amigos escuchas de Frecuencia Primera y como lo habíamos avisado anteriormente estamos en una entrevista especial aquí en una presentación especial de Frecuencia Primera entrevistando a la estrella de los años 80 y la nueva estrella también del, de, actualmente de los años 2000 que eh, se trata de Debbie Gibson eh, hoy conocida como Deborah Gibson a Debbie Gibson la escuchamos mucho y promocionamos mucho eh, allá en 1989 aquí en Frecuencia Primera como lo pueden eh, dar fe nuestro público eh, y vamos a conversar con ella en estos momentos en, en, en tiempo real en vivo quien está con nosotros desde la ciudad de Los Ángeles from LA y doy la bienvenida también a Paola Trancón que está con nosotros aquí en Frecuencia bienvenida Paola Hola Sandro, ¿cómo estás? Te agradezco mucho la invitación por esta gran oportunidad de conversar con Deborah Gibson bueno, eh, Paola, nos reencontramos después, después de cuántos años, Paola? Um, más o menos 10, 12 años, después de <ríe> mucho tiempo, pero es un placer volver a verte y, y ahora a través de internet, claro que sí. Bueno, eh, welcome, Debbie Gibson, welcome to Frecuencia Primera. Thank you, yes, I heard you say about 20 years I've been in the business, yes. Is that what you were saying? Okay. Ella sabe que hace 20 años que está en el medio, entonces yo se felicito. Yo uh, español un poquito. Ah, you speak Spanish? Well, un poquito. Ok, <laughs> so, so feel, feel, feel free to... Por cuatro años, pero no practico mucho. It's ok, feel free to use it, ok? <laughs> <laughs> Ella habla español, ha aprendido un poquito, pero todavía no comprende mucho. Well, uh, Debbie, uh, do you think... Uh, Lost in Your Eyes, that was uh, one of the, your best uh, top songs, uh, was uh, the top of your career. Some people al also think that, that that song and that clip was one of the best songs you have also performed in, and, and it's worldwide known. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, different songs represent different things to me, like Only in my dreams because it was the first is very special to me. But then um, I always think that love songs stand the test of time and and kind of put you on the map. So I would agree. But you know, I love I, I love Lost in Your Eyes also. Um, ella piensa que Only In My Dreams también ha sido una canción muy representativa. Muchas canciones eh, significan mucho para ella, ¿no? Pero en realidad todas las canciones de amor tienen una, un lugar muy especial. So uh, Debbie Gibson uh, and Deborah Gibson, it's uh, it's a very romantic person in the real life. Is that right? <laughs> uh, yeah, when I have a boyfriend, I am. <risa> oh, well, when, I don't, but, I just, when I don't, I just write about it. Entonces, la pregunta es si es que Deborah Gibson, así como interpreta temas románticos y de amor, está enamorada actualmente. Y la respuesta es que, bueno, ella sí es muy romántica cuando está enamorada. En estos momentos está en descanso, se podría decir. This is some time of relax. After anything is possible, that was one of your albums. Um, you return to stage to to theaters. Yeah. Uh, uh, why? Uh, Uh, don't uh, you go to TV or Hollywood? Uh, consider that it's also wor uh, worldwide known because uh, at Broadway is a very special um, a point, but uh, uh, it's not worldwide uh, uh, known in all all the world. So your fans has been uh, some kind to I don't know to uh, to abandon it. Broadway to me, Broadway you just said it's so special and. Broadway it's, is not, it's not always about what's going to get you the most attention or publicity. A lot of times it's just about what you love to do. And for me, theater, theater was my very first love. I love Broadway, and I love the idea that, you know, you're, you're doing a show that only, you know, a thousand people at a time are experiencing. It makes it really intense and really special. And uh, I just, you know, I feel like there's so... I, I do want to do TV and, and all of that as well, but I think that... Um, So many people do TV, but having theater skills is such a unique thing and, um, you know, unique to me, and it's been one of the best things in my career for me. Um, Broadway siempre ha sido su, su primer amor, siempre ha estado enamorada del teatro. Es por ello que ella ha dejado de lado un poco el tema de, lo, de los medios y de la televisión, incluso de las grabaciones, y ha sacrificado ello por su primer amor, que es Broadway y el teatro. Entonces ella piensa que hay mucha gente que está en televisión y en los medios de más audiencia, pero que quizás están desperdiciando el talento que tienen para otros eh, fines, ¿no? Um, Debbie, eh, ¿puedo llamarte Debbie? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, that, that's, a, that's the point. Uh, before the question from Paola, uh, uh, 
sometimes we read in the internet that uh, you say and also in the news that you want to be named um, Deborah Gibson instead of I actually always was. If you look at the first album Even on the cover, the cover it said Debbie, but all, everywhere inside for my um, writing credits and producing credits it said Deborah because yes. my friends and family have always, always called me Deborah, and Debbie was very much a stage name and the record company wanted to use it, but it was never, ever really my name. So I just, I, you know, I got tired of introducing myself to people by a name that was never really mine. I mean, I, I never, ever introduced myself as Debbie until after I had a record out. So really, it wasn't like a change, it was a return to what I've always been called in my life. Sandro le pregunta a, de, a Débora si es que le gusta ser llamada o es que si ha decidido que la llamen Debra en, en lugar de Debbie como se solía llamar. Ella comenta que Debbie eh, fue su nombre de escenario prácticamente, que en su casa, su familia y sus amigos siempre la han llamado Debra y que es por esa razón que no es un cambio sino más bien un retorno a sus orígenes que siempre ha sido llamada entre amigos y entre familiares Debra y que dentro de los CDs a pesar que afuera en la portada se mencionaba Debbie y se, se, se veía así, dentro todo lo que toda la información respecto de su nombre era Debra. Uh, you know something uh, most people uh, feels uh, some kind of nostalgia when they uh, name Debbie because they remember uh, the 80s video clips. Okay. You're very, very bright uh, image there, all your tours and all that kind of stuff. That's why maybe some people uh, don't want to call you that way. That, that you have uh, that kind of experience? Well, the thing is, is people can call me what they want, but I like calling myself Deborah. <laughs> so mucha gente, I mucha gente. It, but, you know, if, if uh, suddenly, um, if suddenly someone told you, you you had a new name and it was uh, John, <laughs> and you had to walk around saying to people, hi, I'm John. After a certain number of years, you go, you know what, I just can't say that anymore, it's just not my name. Of it's course. very simple, it's not a big deal. Of course. Ella dice que, bueno, a pesar de que mucha gente puede sentir nostalgia por eh, ya no va a ser llamada Debbie como solía ser antes, eh, para ella no es un problema, no es un gran problema porque en verdad es como si alguna de nosotros fuera llamado por otro nombre, entonces no se siente identificada necesariamente con Debbie, que era su nombre artístico, sino más bien con Debra. And I would like to ask you a question. I do work as a singer here, and I'm a huge fan of, of your music and your vocals. So, what would you say are the most important characteristics? in a singer, in a performer, talking as uh, vocally as speaking? Oh, you know, I think two things. I mean, I, I am very technically trained, which, you know, I think is really important for sustaining a career because so many singers eventually damage their voice and it, it takes a lot of maintenance to, um, you know, to stay vocally healthy. Yeah. But then I think, you know, if you put in all the work on your technique at home, like if you do a good voice practice and a good warm-up, Then when you go on stage, I think it's important to kind of throw that all away and just tell the story and feed off the energy of the audience um, and not think about, ooh, I, I need to hit this note a certain way. It's more about um, just telling the story and connecting with the audience at that point. So I like to do my work ahead of time so that I have total freedom on stage to just be in the moment and have fun. Okay, my question was, what characteristics do you consider necessary for a artist eh, tenga un, un, una proyección a futuro en el ámbito eh, del canto. Ella dice que obviamente se necesita tener una preparación técnica que ella ha tenido desde su niñez, que es importante eh, preparar eh, los espectáculos y el show con mucha anticipación para sentirse completamente libre y despreocupado de cualquier otro aspecto y poder eh, dedicárselo al público eh, por completo. Pero también es importante no exponer o sobreexponer la voz. Hay muchos artistas que simplemente dejan todo en el escenario, pero no tienen la técnica ni los recursos necesarios. Y es por ello que luego malgastan la voz y, bueno, finalmente se ven los resultados. Uh, and I will have uh, to ask you an, uh, another question. Is there, um, are you a huge fan of somebody else? I mean, uh, from the uh, 70s or the 80s? Oh, what's your yeah, favorite singer? I've always been a very big Billy Joel fan and an Elton John fan, and you know now I like Gwen Stefani, Pink, Maroon 5. Um, I like a lot of different kind of music. I mean, you know, in my iPod there's everything from Rosemary Clooney to Holland Oates 
Ok, le pregunté a, de a, de a Debra que cuáles eran eh, sus artistas favoritos, ella menciona que son muchos en realidad, entre ellos Elton John, Billy Joel y que se han nutrido de diferentes eh, campos eh, en la música, tiene muchos artistas preferidas, pero en verdad lo que le gusta es la música en general. Well, Debbie, Sandro again here. Uh, you have a, an appearance, I think, on TV in that uh, series, Coffee, Coffee. Oh, Coffee Date. Yeah, that's a Coffee cool. Date. That's yeah. Cool. Uh, the, um, yeah. Tell, tell us, tell us about that. We have seen the trial here in Peru. It's not seen that that uh, program, but yeah, we have so seen the, the it's trial. It's, a, it's brand new. It's an independent movie that I did. Le preguntan sobre su participación en TV Coffee, que es una serie que ha aparecido en los Estados Unidos. Ella dice que ha sido, bueno, un intento, pero que todavía no ha sido lanzado uh, en todo el mundo. Yeah, so I don't know when it will be available to be seen, but my website, which is um, debra-gibson.com, usually mm -hmm. tells people when everything, you know, when I'm making appearances and when those kinds of things are, are released. Todavía no sabe cuándo va a ser lanzado eso, pero que en cualquier de los casos en su página web pueden encontrar toda la información, los interesados, los fanáticos. Yes, the website is debora-gibson.com. It's uh, debora-gibson.com. Uh, De uh, Deborah, um, tell us, are you a spiritual person? Some people say that no matter they don't know their fans or the people who follow them, uh, they feel them. No matter the difference of language and geographical distance, is that oh, your okay. case? You feel your fans? Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm very spiritual, and you know, I think music connects people in a way that's so beyond language and location and I mean I have you know I have fans that a lot of times when I do concerts they fly in from all over the world and I think music is such a great way to connect people. Ella es muy espiritual, pero además sabe que la música es un gran medio de conexión a través de las personas. No importa el idioma y no importa lo que haya detrás de ellas, es una, un medio de comunicación que puede reunir a diferentes personas en un mismo lugar, al mismo tiempo, eh, con un mismo fin. And that's the way maybe you have a lot of fans worldwide that still uh, follow you and, and want to know about that, about what, what you do now. I want to confess you something special. In 1989, I remember nothing was known here about uh, Debbie Gibson or Deborah Gibson, but once uh, I was in, in my TV uh, show, we, watching TV uh, with my video recorder and, uh, and voila, it appears, uh, appears you in TV and I say, what? what's that? What's that? <laughs> Uh, it's incredible, uh, really. I remember that it was an afternoon at home, a Sunday, and was uh, many clips were appearing. I get uh, really, really uh, very nervous when Sid say that. I, I remember I record it, and that that was my my experience with with you in 1989. But now is the very uh, special thing because in uh, 2005 um, we have known that you uh, release the single Naked uh, and then uh, that coincides with your appearance in the pictorials of Playboy. Uh -huh. Please, uh, how did you make that decision? May may maybe most of your fans um, have an angelical image from you and now you are some kind of wild, it's something different. No, Please. I'm not wild, I just don't, um, you know, women, especially, you know, I mean I'm 35 now, I think We all have many, many facets to, to us women. I mean, I think that all women can be childlike, angelic, sexy, everything. And I, you know, I was at a point where I was always like the opposite of sexy. I always like avoided any kind of sexy image because I thought it was so obvious that so many people were doing that. But I think 20 years into my career, you know, it, to add that to the mix didn't seem to be anything earth shattering to me. I mean, After doing musicals like Gypsy and Cabaret in Chicago, which were very adult and very, um, you know, kind of sexually aggressive in a way, um, I, was, I was very comfortable with that part of myself. And, you know, they gave me such creative freedom to do whatever I want. I didn't have to do anything I didn't want to do. I created the, the whole look of the um, shoot, and I thought I did something really unique for the magazine because I did a kind of a more theatrical, glamorous kind of a thing. And it proved to be such, a, it was such an amazing experience for me because I felt like um, 
you know, I had legitimately grown and changed, and I, I just, I just wasn't afraid of what people were going to think, which felt good. It wasn't. It doesn't make you a grown up. That you, it doesn't mean it, if you do a, a pictorial like that, you're suddenly a grown up. It's just when you don't really care what people think and you're true to yourself. That's what really I think makes people realize that you're your own person, your own woman. Sandro Parodi le confiesa a, a Debra todo lo que sintió la primera vez que lo vio eh, en la aparición en, en su aparición en televisión por primera vez eso fue a que por los eh, 1989 él quedó y lo confiesa impactado con la belleza y con el talento de Deborah Gibson y le pregunta cómo, si fue difícil tomar la decisión de aparecer en la revista Playboy eh, recientemente el año pasado eh, bueno con unas fotos muy sugestivas también muy eh, profesionales y si fue difícil para ella tener eh, cambiar que cambiar esa imagen de niña angelical a una niña quizás mucho más sexy y más sensual y ella responde que en verdad no es un cambio radical que ella ahora a sus 35 años se siente mucho más segura de su feminidad de la mujer que es y después de haber trabajado en Broadway en algunas eh, presentaciones eh, como cabaret ella se siente mucho más segura de poder haber tomado esa decisión no es un gran cambio ella piensa que todas las mujeres somos capaces de poder ser cuando queremos, angelicales, sensuales, sexys, eh, etcétera. Entonces, ella no piensa que ha sido un cambio ni una decisión muy difícil de tomar, se siente segura de lo que ha hecho y la gente ha respondido bien a ello. Uh, Debbie, um, you are a very fortunate person, uh, as well as um, we read in your bio, you have a very early career in the stage, in the theaters, uh, since you were a child. Uh, how was that experience since um, you have maybe no time to play, uh, to play games? Is it like a child you were in, th in the stage? Tell us. Well, first of all, I always made time to play. I still went to, to my slumber parties and all of that, but there were times where I chose, uh, you know, doing, let's say, doing a show over a, a birthday party or something, I just, uh, I, to me, that was play, you know, to me, they call it a play, you know, when, you, when people say, oh, I'm doing a play, it's called doing a play, because you're playing, it's like you're playing dress up, it's, it's, to me, the most fun thing in the world, so, I, um, you know, I just, I just always loved it, I mean, I, I think I still had a relatively normal childhood. I stayed in regular school. My mom helped keep me balanced in that way, but um, there definitely are sacrifices you make if you want to be in the business, but that was stuff I chose. I just I just loved it and chose it, and, you know, there are some kids that are professional skaters or gymnasts, or, you know, and they get up for school, before school, and go and train for four hours, and, you know, there are a lot of kids out there that have that level of dedication, and I was one of them, I guess. Le preguntamos a, a Deborah Gibson si es que ella sintió en algún momento que su niñez fue distinta a la de los demás niños en, en su pueblo, en su lugar de nacimiento. Y es porque, según su biografía, ella empezó eh, trabajando en, en el teatro desde hace desde muchos años atrás, desde que era aún muy pequeña, incluso desde los cinco años. Y le preguntamos si es que ella tiene algún eh, sentimiento de quizás eh, nostalgia frente a, esa, a esos años que ella se dedicó a trabajar siendo niña y si había perdido la oportunidad de interactuar con otros niños de su edad quizás en juegos, ella lo que menciona es que ella no ha sentido eh, ningún cambio respecto a su niñez ella siente que ha llevado una niñez muy normal ha tenido eh, y se ha dado el tiempo para jugar con otros niños se ha hecho eh, de tiempo para ello y también ella siente que su participación en, en el teatro desde muy niña ha sido como un juego a esa edad no lo tomaba como un trabajo quizás sino solamente un juego que era eh, cambiarse para una determinada rutina y luego cambiarse para la otra y ella disfrutaba mucho, ella era feliz haciéndolo porque era como un juego para ella entonces siempre ha habido oportunidad de que ella estudie incluso en colegios eh, públicos eh, junto con sus demás compañeros, eh, su educación no ha variado en ese sentido solamente que después de sus clases tenía que llevar un entrenamiento profesional y su participación en el teatro que ella disfrutaba muchísimo 
Debbie, um, tell uh, De uh, Deborah, Deborah. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> okay, uh, you have to uh, talk about your stage experience. You know, uh, I don't know if you know uh, that in the Latin America world, uh, is um, um, we have also a lot of talent in the stage, but the situation the, is very different from the United States and also from Europe, because here is very, we have people who are in stage need to have very very hard work to, to try to, to, to make um, a performance or, or a work or a, or a stage play because many times the government and also uh, doesn't uh, um, help or aid in these kind of things. Uh, we have a recent experience for example from an author called David Auburn who make proof. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, we, we contact Mr. Auburn and help a very small group of theater plays here in Peru, they need, they need, for example, to have a way that um, play right because they can't afford that. And that's a very, very critical thing. You are very fortunate to have a very early um, uh, yeah, experience. But what can you say to people that don't have you know, the fortune you have, but they want, they want to? Well, you know, I don't, I don't concentrate on the fortune part. Like I think you make your own fortune and you make your own luck. People always, if they say you're lucky, I always say I work very hard to be this lucky. You know, you <laughs> you have to, um, you know, basically nothing's ever been handed to me. Um, you know, there have been times, like there was a show I wanted to do, and I hadn't gotten called to do it yet, and so I went and auditioned for a whole different show that the same company was doing, just so they would see me in the room and get the idea to call me for the actual show I wanted to do, which was cabaret. <laughs> But you have to get really clever, because people aren't just always, like, calling me to do things. I, I, I go out and I really try to make things happen. So I think that, you know, and I enjoy, I do it for the love of it. I never think, oh, how much money am I going to make, or what, it, how much fame is this going to bring me? I just, I just do, I just do what I love to do, and that's, uh, I think that's what makes me fortunate more than anything, is that I... I uh, have a good sense of what makes me happy, and that's what I do. Like you said earlier, I might get more attention or fame or whatever from TV and film, but it doesn't make me as happy as theater. So I just, you know, I think that um, people just have to, have to be true to themselves and what they love to do. Sandra le pregunta a Debra si es que ella se considera afortunada por haber iniciado su carrera a tan temprana edad en un país donde los medios de comunicación tienen una gran proyección y además eh, si es que ella considera que ha tenido suerte en su carrera profesional. Ella dice que la suerte uno la genera, uno busca su propio futuro, su propia proyección. Ella eh, no se considera afortunada en el sentido de que le ha llegado todo del cielo. Ella piensa que todo lo que ha conseguido hasta ese momento eh, ha sido en base a su trabajo, ha trabajado con mucho empeño y se ha sacrificado en muchas ocasiones. Entonces, ella no quisiera concentrarse en, la, en eh, demasiada atención en el tema de la suerte o de la fortuna, sino más bien en el trabajo que uno puede eh, realizar y lo que ello puede traer como, como resultado. También piensa que el esfuerzo es eh, una característica de, muy importante en todos los uh, artistas, ¿no? Like the song of anything is possible then, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Usually there's, you know, ten reasons why people, you know, people tell you like, you know, the ten reasons why you can't do something or something can't happen. And I'm always thinking, yeah, but what, you know, somebody, you know, like people will say, You know, even when I was a kid, well, you, you cannot hit records with songs you write. And I'm thinking, well, somebody writes these hit songs. Why can't it be me? You know, I think that you have to focus on um, what you can do as opposed to what you can't do. Ella menciona también anteriormente que el teatro es, eh, sigue siendo su pasión y es por ello que ella ha tomado la decisión de eh, dedicarse a ello exclusivamente, quizás sacrificando eh, la proyección que tuve, podría tener eh, a través de los medios de comunicación como la televisión o a través de sus grabaciones. Y Sandra le pregunta eh, que en relación a esto es que viene la canción Anything is possible, cualquier cosa es posible, y ella considera que es una verdad, que efectivamente cualquier cosa es posible si es que uno verdad 
verdad lo desea y se empeña por lograrlo, ¿no? Entonces, eh, esa canción tiene mucho que ver con su propia eh, experiencia. Uh, besides the artistic world, what what you have uh, known about Latin America? Do you know about Peru and these kind of countries? Most most times, uh, many many fans, many people here think that North Americans uh, ignore or doth, doesn't know the so the sole existence of these countries. Well, we don't know a lot, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we don't really get a lot of information. Um, that's true. You know, I I see things when I travel in general about places, but I'm usually not in a place for long enough to really get to know. So. Sandra le pregunta si es que tiene conocimiento sobre nuestro país, sobre nuestra cultura o sobre la problemática que estamos atravesando. Ella dice que no, no tiene mucha información al respecto, que le gustaría conocer. Lamentablemente, cuando ella viaja, no se queda por periodos muy largos en los países que visita. Le gustaría saber un poco más de, de Perú y, bueno, quisiera saber qué le podríamos contar sobre Perú. Sí, tú. Well, Peru uh, has got lots of talented people, um, musically speaking, and um, the thing is that I believe that your statement is true. If we work really, really hard, and if we really think that we can make it, uh, it's probably make it happen, right? So Absolutely. You, you teach people, I believe you teach people how to perceive you. So if you act like a failure, they'll perceive you as a failure. If you act like... You know, yes, yes, and it's, world, it's, 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 it's this it. situation that makes us uh, stronger, and uh, obviously pro we are no, we can find producers like from the States or from some other countries in Europe. It's really difficult to get a person who really wants to invest money on you, unlike some other countries. But we have to keep going anyway, right? And uh, well, um, changing the talk. I would, I would come do a musical there. <laughs> Why not? Have you, have you considered uh, to come here someday as a tourist? Oh, I would do, absolutely. I would come as a tourist. I would come do a theater production, whatever. Absolutely. I'm open to everything. Ok, le pregunto si en un momento ella ha pensado venir a Perú y está completamente dispuesta a venir, ya sea para una producción teatral o simplemente como turista. Le encantaría conocer Perú. Uh, also about stage, it will be interesting to, sub, uh, to make some kind of uh, aid or, or, or interchange, exchange with, with, uh, with Broadway, because most people also have that dream, you know, the dream of, of, of making stage in, in that place. Well, do you guys have like community theater and stuff? Si, si tenemos una comunidad teatral aquí, claro que sí. Yes, yes, we do. Yeah, yes. I mean, you know, I grew up doing community theater. It's like I, I was saying, um, I never thought of it as, well, what level am I doing this on? Is this professional? I never even thought about that. I just thought, hey, any chance I get to perform is great. So people out there who are interested in it should just get out there and do it in whatever, whatever setting is available to them. No, ella piensa que no importa lo que lo, lo, lo muy grande que pueda ser eh, la, la eh, presentación que uno tenga, sino más bien eh, los, las ganas que tenga de salir adelante, ¿no? Es por ello que eh, sus presentaciones al inicio fueron en community, community theaters, que eran presentaciones de, de teatro, en realidad, como lo que vendría a ser acá, presentaciones eh, de, los, de nuestras ciudades pequeñas, pueblos, etcétera. Entonces, ella piensa que lo importante es empezar, ¿no? Empezar y luego tener las ganas de seguir adelante y, y hacerlo mucho más profesionalmente. No importa la envergadura de, de la presentación. Ok, Debbie, uh, Deborah, we are just in, at the end of, of the interview. We have a very, very special thanks for you uh, for, for that yeah. interview. We are very honored for that. Also here, Paola and all our crew, our staff. Thank you so much. It was nice to talk to you. Oh, really, really. You know something? Um, uh, I, uh, Paola, Paola, he's one is talk something. Uh, I, I don't mean bothering you, but if it's possible that you could sing just a little part of some song that would make me, especially me, really happy because I've always wanted to hear you and, and I, never, I, I never had the opportunity to go to the States or to go to a, one of your shows. Uh, I just have your DVD. <laughs> That's, That's what I've got. A little bit, but keep in mind it's early here. It's more morning. Okay, let's see. Um, hmm. 
le pido a, de a Deborah que si es que puede interpretarnos, aunque sea un, en forma muy breve, alguna canción, porque para muchos de los fanáticos, incluida yo por supuesto, eh, como cantante me interesa mucho poder haber escuchado, eh, escucharla cantar eh, en vivo. Eh, no he tenido oportunidad de ir a ninguna de sus presentaciones, por eso es que yo pienso que todos los, eh, la audiencia de Frecuencia Primera también va a estar encantada de escucharlo. Okay. Ella dice que aún es mañana, ¿no? Obviamente los cantantes yes. no interpretan a estas horas, pero de repente nos puede complacer. Ok. So ok. Ok. I get lost in your eyes And I feel my spirit rise And so like the wind For within love that I am Get weak in a glass Isn't this what's called romance And now I know Cause when I'm lost I can't let go <laughs> Thank you very much, that was amazing <laughs> Oh, really? Thank you guys, have a great day